I would like to welcome you today to a new, relatively new technique for me. Um, this is actually take three for me since my camera decided to lose batteries both times. So today I have my husband, Chris, standing back there behind the camera and I have another camera running over here so I'm hoping that I get everything on here. So today I'm going to do a tree swipe uh, with acrylic paint and uh, we're going to get right to it so that I'm not wasting everyone's time. So I'm going to have Chris bring the camera down to my canvas. Just wanted you to kind of see who I was. So. <laughs> So I'm going to bring the camera down to my canvas and as you can see I already started to pour um, some Amsterdam titanium white. This is my Dutch pour recipe which is 80% Floetrol, 25% paint and 25% water. Mix it however way you want um, but this one works really well for me and it's also a fairly good consistency and that's pretty much where I have my paints set as well. Now if there's one thing that I have learned doing some practices of this technique is there's a very delicate balance with how much paint to use on your canvas. So you don't want to put so much paint that you have to uh, oops, I got a little booger on there, that you have to uh, tilt or spin because this is not one that you want to do that with. Oh, I must not have cleaned my palette knife off. Well, actually, if this doesn't look familiar to you, this is, I don't use this in my kitchen anymore, but it's actually a cake frosting spreader. So, one of the things that I did, let me just show you really quick. This is the one that I did yesterday. And I, oops, I almost just tripped over myself. This is one that I did yesterday. This one here, which I absolutely love. Um, when I was putting on my white paint, I left the ends a little bit naked, I guess you can call it. So I, I didn't get it spread out enough. So I had to kind of fiddle with it afterwards. But I do love that one. So I'm gonna try to emulate that same one. But I wanna make sure that every bit of this is covered, but not so much that it ends up being gobs of paint that floats around and will never dry or will crack. So I'm going to put my gloves on just because I want to use my fingers and I can kind of feel the canvas a little bit better when I put my gloves on. I hope you're all doing well on this Saturday. This is my second video. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I get all of the corners because that seems to be where I missed yesterday. So I'm going to just gently glide this over onto the edges. And I could probably use this little spatula thing to swipe, but I'm going to use cards, like as in playing cards. I found that if you don't spend the time, which I can sometimes be extremely impatient, but if you don't spend the time doing this part correct, when you go to swipe and you have dry places on your canvas, or canvas board is what I'm using, it won't move. The swipe won't go over the top of it. So I would imagine that for all kinds of swipes, that's probably true. And it doesn't really matter if it looks pretty. I am going to kind of turn my paint a little bit here just so that I can make sure that I have, because this paint is a little bit thinner than most of my paints, 
I can actually see it kind of move a little bit. And I can see if there are any naked spots, which I think I don't see any. So, um, to prepare this particular board, I taped off this sides because they're already painted black. I also uh, taped off the back and uh, so that I don't get my icky fingers all over the back of it. Because if this one turns out really well, which I have a feeling and hopefully it will, if this turns out really well, this one will be for sale. So, and if you ever see any of my paintings that you're interested in, just email me at artbydebrarose at gmail.com and we can talk about it. Or if there is a painting that you might want me to do for you, do the same. Just email me at artbydebrarose at gmail.com and we can talk about it. Um, I do not use Facebook Messenger to sell any paintings because... Well, I don't have to explain that. There can sometimes be some very strange things that happen there, so. All right, so I'm gonna use my torch. Make sure I get the air bubbles out. And then I'm gonna start with my colors. I will torch again. I'm gonna keep these out of the way. All right, so. On that painting that I did yesterday, I left my darker colors on the bottom and kind of worked my way up. So my idea for this painting is to have kind of um, yellowish colors up here, yellow and blue, because I want it kind of be like the sky behind it, darker yellow, oranges, blue, and then into a little bit darker blue and then dark on the bottom so it kind of looks like maybe the sun is setting behind my tree and um, i'm doing the thing that my husband hates the most in using air quotes <laughs> he really that really annoys him all right so the other night the other day on facebook i did a live and i was using these really pretty blues and I had leftover blues and I blues and greens and I mixed them so I can't even tell you what colors are in here because I mixed them all together so I'm going to use this one down as my base now the trick to this is to oh boy I better use two hands is I want to get this down the middle and so I'm going to use both hands use the spout and start off of the canvas and that's probably way too much paint and my line is squiggling but oh boy I did not want to do that so I'm gonna just pull this up a little bit and it's not really gonna matter a lot because it will be dragged and I don't want that much paint on there so I'm gonna move some of this paint off now so that I don't end up with the gobs and gobs of paint because I am going to be putting several layers of paint on here. So as you can see, I learned some lessons <laughs> in the first few that I did. All right, so we're going to start with that blue and then we're going to go with this, oops, this blue. All right, 
So I'm going to use ordinary play car playing cards to do my swipes. This time I also have to make sure that each card that I pick up is straight on the edges. So this is my Shelly Art Bloom recipe um, for cells, cell activator. So it's Australian Floetrol and Oxide Black. And I broke the top off of it. <laughs> All right, I also learned that the cell activator will sink down, so I do it just a little bit at a time, like one card length at a time. So here we go. We gently set the card down, and then we're gonna pull the paint across the top, and hopefully get beautiful cells. And I did. <laughs> yes! Okay. I'll add a little bit more here. Do go through a little bit more cell activator than normal, I think. See how I just let it touch it? I am barely going down because I don't want to dig into the paint that I put down. Oh, see, I just lifted. Dang it. Which means I'm gonna miss the colors there. I <sighs> have to fix that. So, I lifted my card as I was bringing it across and I don't, I've been told not to mess with it because you could actually kind of ruin it. So I might just add some color there after. All right, let's try this again. You're such a joker. What, I'm a joker? Oh, look at your card. Ah! <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be using the joker card. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Also, the problem is wearing these gloves, I can't really feel. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Keep it down almost parallel to the board. I'm also right-handed, so that could be part of the problem. Oh, there we go. Oh, pretty, pretty. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna change cards. I want it to stay so it's nice and straight. Straight edge on there. I hear I got little bubbles in there. Blah, 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 every single time. All right, start it right in the middle and bring it across nice and slow. That's always my problem is I try to go too fast and that gets me into trouble every single time. So what's happening here is it's a chemical reaction between the Australian Floetrol, which is magic as far as I'm concerned, and then the paints. There's no silicone in this paint at all, none of it. All of the cell reaction is coming directly from the Floetrol and probably a couple of these metallics are helping out. All right, six of clubs, don't fail me. You know what, I don't wanna drag my finger across. I'm gonna take my gloves off, which means I'm probably gonna get messy. I just know it, so I'm gonna put this down here because there's, I wanna be able to wipe my card off. All right, okay, now I can feel this card a little bit easier. And drag it. Oh, this is always magical to me. Satisfying. <laughs> it really is. I know it's weird, but it is. Wow, so pretty. And I do want to, you know, maintain a darker center in here anyway, because that's kind of like my tree trunk. Oop, I better not use those air air quotes, because somebody over there by the camera doesn't like that. Oop, gotta be careful. Oh, careful, careful. Oh, 
so pretty. Now do you see why I didn't put the cell activator all the way down? Because by the time I would get down here, it would have sunk and not been useful. And I'm not using this side of the card, which I probably could because I think I'll get my knuckles in the paint. I need a little bit more room between me and the paint. All right, seven of clubs don't fail me now. I let it just sit on the paint there and then move it over, keeping it as straight as possible and moving slowly. And there's a good possibility that when I do the editing on this video, I might speed up this part after the first few swipes. Oop, I better add a little bit more. card in half. Okay, and I am going to start the bottom of the tree trunk right about here. So I'm going to bring this down here like this and let some of this paint drop off the side just like that. Because tree trunks are never just straight, they do kind of come down and they have those scraggly little roots that come along the side. We're going to make sure that we get some of them scraggly little roots and I just dipped it right in there. So we're going to kind of bring it down. Drag some of that black down here. Wiggle those little roots in here a little bit. Just like that give it some dimension. Come back up here. This doesn't have to be done quite as slow as when we are um, doing the, getting the cells there. Oh boy. Oh, we do left-handed here. We'll see how ambidextrous I really am. I always say I am. I guess there's some people that can't use their opposite hand, but a few years ago I had big hand surgery and I had to learn to use my left hand. There we go. How's that looking, Chris? From up there. Good. You know, and trees, they're not like super even, you know, they have all kinds of naughty things going on. And I don't mean naughty as in bad. <laughs> all right. Okay, I'm gonna take this one here and I wanna just cut a little bit off of this one because I wanna bring the tree trunk up a little bit. Kind of bring it up. You see why I left some black in the middle? We're going to bring our first limb right out here, just like that. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to bring this 
never realized that playing cards could make an art tool, but they do. So remember that really goofy spot up there in the corner? We're just going to ungoofy it. All right. Now, what I like to do, and I found this helpful yesterday, was to actually use my wooden skewer to kind of make my outline of my branches and then use my card. So, oh, look, it looks like knots in the tree. All right, we're gonna bring this one out here. And let's bring one down here, bring one up here, one off, let's gotta have, you know, they get those little branches off of it. My husband knows because he's always picking up twigs that fall every time we get bad weather. You know, and, and it's nice when your tree is kind of almost in a little bit of a silhouette when the sun is setting, you know? And we're gonna call this tree, it's in the middle of a fantasy forest, right? You know, it's not a regular forest as you would imagine. And I, but I don't want it to be a creepy tree either, you know? Like freaking people out or anything. I always have a branch that's kind of coming down branches off the branches you know <sighs> my tree is leaning a little bit so if the wind blows <laughs> it could topple okay so as I was saying we had to change the battery out um, I learned a lot about trees I was watching a video one day and they were talking about the roots of a tree and you know how in a lot of paintings you see a tree and you see the ground and then you see all the the roots you know like a big huge root ball under the tree well I found out that when trees grow no matter how they are there's just a very small root ball under the tree and then all the roots spread out under the ground so when a tree falls over and you see the top of the you see the roots and you see the top of the tree that's actually what's there that's what's holding a tree up no matter how old they are so fun fact <laughs> oh yeah sometimes i'm a nerd well ask my husband am i a nerd all the time because i pretty much am all right so now let me take my card and now i'm going to and i'm actually going to use this size and i'm going to now bring some of this up so that I make sure I have a good trunk going on, on here. And then I'm gonna take my card and I'm gonna kind of follow those lines to make our limbs. So I'm gonna drag them out a little bit. And you see, because of the amount of paint on there, it will actually sink back out, you know, sink back in. So we're gonna use our card here, make this a little bit wider, here, out here. See right over this one, I'm bring this one here and just kind of bring it right over the top of that limb. Cause you know, trees, their limbs grow over each other, right? They're not always, you know, just straight out and nothing there. They, they have, they grow over the top of each other. Well, when you're seeing them in perspective. It's awful hard, you know, when you're doing a painting, you're trying to create like a 3D effect from something that's one dimensional and you try to do that with shadows and highlights. You know, so I kind of know that the light is probably coming in from the back of this tree because this in my in my world the sun is setting here, so there we go. Bring a limb right down over the top of that one. Let's bring one of these up here, right over the top of that. Yeah, it's my 
tree, right? I guess I can make my tree any way I want. Little, little branches. I'm not making any leaves because uh, 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 that would be not a good idea. Not on my, not in my little world of she can't draw. Oh my goodness, these colors! I am loving these colors, and I think that the base of my tree is gorgeous. All these, it's kind of spreading out nicely. Bring this up a little bit. Maybe one of these branches. Kind of has like a, a gnarly thing kind of coming down around the tree a little bit. You know? There we go, kind of coming down. And then maybe there's one over here. Gosh, I'm starting to sound like Bob Ross. Maybe there's one little happy tree branch coming down over here. <laughs> yeah, who knows? It is my forest after all, right? No one ever said I was an arborist. Yeah, that's what tree people are called. Okay, I think I'm about almost ready to call this done. What do you think, Chris? I'm ready. <laughs> but do you think this is ready? What are your thoughts? Mm, I think the middle's a little thin. Down in here? Okay. Mm. All right, let's, let's bring this up just a little bit. that are coming off of the middle. You know, we don't want it to just go nowhere, right? We're going to call that one. Just about. I am the queen of messing with stuff. I think this needs just a little bit of something coming down here. There we go. This side seemed to get a lot of attention and this side didn't. Doesn't have to be symmetrical. Well, <laughs> depends on whose world you're living in. Because <laughs> if you're living in my world and my husband's world, most of the time we like to have things in symmetry. I think I need to just bring a little bit up over this corner. There. I love it. I'm going to turn it around. So y'all can see it the way that I see it. And we're gonna call that one done. <gasps> I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, you can. So, I want to thank you for joining me on today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about 
tree swiping, about swiping in general, maybe even a little bit about trees. <laughs> and uh, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video, 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 <laughs> which it will usually be on Saturdays. So I hope you have a blessed week, have a great week, and we'll see you next week. And leave down in the comments if there's something that you would like to see me do or try, because I'm new at this whole paint pouring process. I've only been doing it for about six months or so. And if there's something that you'd like to see me try, leave it in the comments. If there's some colors or uh, some kind of a process, let me know. I'm happy to try anything. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So until next week, everyone, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me on my crazy art journey. Join me over on my Facebook, at Art by Deborah Rose, and uh, I do live videos on Mondays at 1, Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. God bless, take care. Until next week, happy painting.